Hi everyone, welcome to How to Electronics. In this tutorial, we will learn about the Canvas protocol by interfacing MCB2515 Canvas module with Arduino. We will transmit the DST live and sensor data over a certain distance using the CAN protocol. Controller Area Network, also known as Canvas, is a common industrial bus because of its long travel distance, medium communication speed, and high reliability. It is commonly found on modern machine tools and is an automotive diagnostic bus. The standard communication protocols like UART, SPA, and I2C are not reliable for vehicle system and where the communication is done over long rides. Hence, we need an automobile communication protocol like the CAN protocol for high speed and thousands of data transmission at a single time. In this guide, we will learn about the Canvas communication protocol using Microchip MCV. 2515 Canvas module and Arduino board. Using the pair of Canvas module MCB2515, we will send the DST live in sensor data over a distance of a few centimeters. Thus, this guide will clear your concept about Canvas protocol and give you a clear picture about implanting CAN protocol in any project. So, let's begin with today's tutorial. Do you want professional PCBs like this one that looks so good then use the services of next PCB. You can select the board size, any solder mask color that you want including something like red and green. You can select the thickness and the PCB could be from 2 up to 32 layers for some more complex design. The finish quality is so good and if you want better connectivity, you could also select some gold finish for the pads. The ordering process is so easy. Just go to nextpcv.com then quit now. Insert your design setting, upload your cover files and order now. And receive the PCV in a couple of days. First, let us learn about Canvas protocol insert. Today's vehicle can contain over 70 electronics control units, also known as nodes that control subsystem for the engine, power steering, anti-lock brakes and more. Communication between this subsystem is critical to ensure the reliability and safety demanded in the automotive market. In the past, the nodes were connected by dedicated analog signal wires, which was architecturally complex and costly. In 1986, the controller area network or CAN was standardized, allowing in vehicle nodes to communicate via multiplex wiring rather than dedicated ones. Let's take a high-level look at the main benefits of CAN and why they make CAN the most widely used in vehicle communication network today. First, CAN is low-cost because its ECU in a vehicle is able to communicate with the rest of the network via a single CAN interface. The cost and architectural complexity are significantly decreased. The CAN bus also makes for easier design upgrades, conserving precious engineering time. CAN is efficient. The protocol is message-based, meaning every node on the network can send and receive messages and can determine if a message is relevant to them or should be ignored. Only one message can be transmitted on the CAN bus at a given time. An arbitration ID within the CAN frame indicates message priority, allowing higher priority messages to continue with no delay while lower priority messages wait, thus avoiding message corruption caused by collision. And speaking of corruption, CAN is reliable. And CAN specification contains 5 methods of error checking, making it extremely reliable for applications where failure is not an option. CAN is also robust. Its high-speed data lines are resistant to electrical disturbance. Some CAN controllers and receivers also come in extended temperature, ranges or fault-resistant varieties for the most demanding environments. Lastly, CAN is flexible because it is message-based protocol. The nodes on the network contain no identifying information associated with them. This allows nodes to be added or removed from the system without any hardware or software modification to be done. Because of these benefits, there is no wonder CAN is the network of choice for issue and sensor communication in nearly all automotive applications today. It is also growing in popularity in many industrial applications where the same reliability, robustness, and flexibility are required including building automation, medical devices, aviations, and many more. Now, let us learn how we can use CAN bus protocol with Arduino. The MCP2515 Canvas controller is a simple module that supports CAN protocol version 2.0b. 
It can be used for communication at 1 Mbps. The MCP2515IC is a standalone CAN controller and has an integrated SPA interface for communication with microcontrollers. The module has TJA1050IC which acts as an interface between the MCP2515 CAN controller IC and the physical CAN bus. The board has a 8 MHz crystal oscillator. A jumper can be attached which will give 120 ohm termination. CAN edge and CAN L are the two screws where wires can be attached over a distance for communicating with another CAN module. This is the circuit diagram for the CAN module. The MCP2515IC is the main controller that internally consists of three main sub-components, the CAN module, the control logic and the SPA block. You can refer to the MCP2515 dataset for more information. Now let us interface MCP2515 CAN bus module with Arduino and test the CAN communication protocol. For this, we need following component, a pair of MCP2515 CAN bus module, then Arduino Uno board and also Arduino Nano board. I used DST Live in Humidity and Temperature Sensor for the demo. I also used 16 x 2 i square c LCD display for displaying the sensor data. We will transmit the DST Live in sensor data over a CAN bus with the help of a pair of Arduino board and MCB2515 CAN module. Here is the simple connection diagram. The upper part consisting of Arduino Uno board, CAN module and I2C LCD is a receiver part. Similarly, bottom part consisting of Arduino Nano board, CAN module and DST Live in Humidity temperature sensor is the transmitter part. The transmitter and receiver part is connected to each other with the help of MCB2515 CAN bus module. The CAN edge and CAN L of the transmitter are connected to the CAN edge and CAN L of the receiver respectively. You can assemble the circuit on a breadboard or you can use your own custom PCB for this project. I used a pair of breadboards to assemble this circuit. This is the transmitter part and this is the receiver part. The connection are too many, hence too many wires are required for breadboard connection. I recommend you to use the custom PCB for this product. Before moving to the coding part of the project, we need to install MCP2515 Canvas Library to the Arduino IDE. This Canvas Library gives your Arduino Canvas capability with multiple features. It implements CAN V2.0V up to 1 MB per second and also SPA interface up to 10 MHz. It has standard 11 bit and extended 29 bit data and remote friends. There are two receive buffers with prioritized message storage. Download the library from the following GitHub link and then add it to the Arduino library folder. You also need to add DST Live library to Arduino library folder. The code is divided into two parts, one is CAN transmitter code for Arduino Nano and other is CAN receiver code for Arduino Uno. In the transmitter part, we have SPI, MCP2515 and DST sensor library. We defined DST pin as 8 and DST type is DST Raven. Then of defined stroke data type for storing CAN message format, this line sets the SPI CS pin to 10. Then we initialized object for class DST. Under setup function, we initialize serial begin, SPA begin, and DST begin. The MCB2515 is reset using this command. The MCB2515 is set to a speed of 500 kbps and 8 MHz as the clock frequency. Then, it is set as a normal mode. Using this library function, we read the temperature and humidity value from DST11 sensor. Then, we print the value on serial monitor. The CAN ID is given as 0 cross 036 and DLC as 8 and we give the H and T data to data 0 and data 1 and reset all the data with 0. In the order to send the message to CAN bus, we use the following statement. In the receiver code, we used SPI MCB2515 and liquid crystal I2C library. Then, we defined the LCD I2C address as 0 cross 27 and LCD rows column as 16 cross 2. In the setup section, we initialize serial begin, SPA begin and all other LCD function. Rest of the functions are similar to the transmitter code. This statement is used to receive the message from CAN bus. If the message is received, it gets into the if condition. In the if condition, the data is received and stored in CAN meshes, the data 0 that has humidity value and the data 1 that has temperature value. Both the values are stored in an integer x and y. 
Finally, these values are displayed on LCD screen. Now, from the tools menu, select the respective Arduino board for code uploading and also the port. Then, upload the TX and RX code to the respective board. After uploading the code, when the board is powered, you should notice the temperature value read by DST11 will be sent to another Arduino through CAN communication. The message will be displayed on the LCD of the second Arduino. This is how you can use the CAN bus communication in Arduino. Remember this one, you need to short a 120 ohm resistor at receiver MCP2515 board. Else if not sorted, the LCD will operate to be blank as no message is received. The complete project details including device information, purchase link, source code and written guide can be followed in the Auto Electronics website article. In case you have any other questions, you can comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.